We'll also start the live transcripts. If I can figure out. Elizabeth, can you start those? I never can find them. Oh, it's thanks. On. Thank you. All right. Um, so today we have, uh, I sent the agenda out uh, kind of ahead of time. I'm seeing if Emma is on, because I think Emma was going to spend a little bit of time talking about work that they're doing at Microsoft with respect to um, metrics they've been using. So without Emma here right now, I'll just postpone that item. I'll just go to the next item on the list, which is Don. You had the, this was about a proposal for a talk at OSPOCON. You want to mention that real fast? Yeah, I was just, it just occurred to me that the OSPOCON CFP, oops, our summit CFP, uh, closes, I think, Monday or Tuesday next week. And um, I was thinking it might be interesting to put together a metrics panel that's not like, a lot of times we do metrics panels at these events and it's all of the usual suspects from chaos. Um, but I was thinking maybe instead of doing that, that we um, kind of limit it to people who work in OSPOs and do chaos metrics. So kind of the, we can talk about the work that we're doing in this group. We can talk about the, the metrics that we're using in um, individual companies. And so I was curious if people thought this was a good idea. And if so, um, if there are people working in OSPOs who'd want to be on the panel. Sophia says plus one. Does that mean you want to be on the panel? I'm happy to, but I've also been on the chaos panel of usual suspects, so I don't have to be on it. Um, <laughs> but I'm happy to, happy to support it with questions, moderate, whatever role makes sense. Okay. Anyone right, else interested? Uh, well, I'll ping a couple of people offline and if we get enough interest, see if we can quickly pull together some sort of proposal. Where is it, Don? Uh, Vancouver in May. Oh, oh, for, oh, it's part of the Open Source Summit North America. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I see. Sounds... I see. Emma Irwin just joined. Emma, I have a question. We skipped your agenda item and went to mine. And I have a question for you. Are you going to the Open Source Summit in Vancouver in person? And if so, would you like to be on an OSPOCon panel proposal about how we use metrics in our OSPOs? Not to put you on the spot when you just joined or anything. I think you might be muted if you're talking. <laughs> okay. Yes, you got a yes. Okay, I got a yes. Awesome. Cool. Okay, well, we'll let Emma sort out her issues. Um, okay, cool. That's That's what I needed from people, so thank you. Don, do you want me to start a document at all or anything that you could put ideas in and share it on awesome. the on the I could put it in Slack on that on the channel on to do? That would be awesome. Thank you. Okay. Yep, you bet. I think it would be helpful to like I would be interested in um like collecting questions i mean because of from from ospos who like maybe want to do metrics but maybe i like i don't necessarily feel like i could sit in on a panel but um would definitely have questions for for the group here would you like to moderate the panel and help us come up with the questions and and wrangle us i would be like uh maybe yeah <laughs> I mean, like that would be interesting. Um, I heard hell and yes. I'm definitely, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I might have like, I feel like I have imposter syndrome when it comes to metrics. So I'm not sure it would be, an, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay. So let's keep talking. Yeah, think about it and maybe, maybe let me know today or tomorrow so we can put together the proposal but I, I think you I think you'd be a great moderator for it absolutely Aww. I think there's no issue having you having you moderate it okay 
All right. Well, let me let me circle back with the comms people here um, okay. and make sure that it all makes sense. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Okay. All right. Great. Um, well, I consider that success potentially. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with with three panel members and a moderator. So, all right, Don. Any other any other comments on that, Don? Nope. Mission accomplished. I'm done. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> and like I said, I'll share that doc in the Slack channel uh, just a little bit later this afternoon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Emma, are you, is Emma still on? Are you there? All right. So we will continue to, you are here, but I'll, we'll continue to let you sort out um, the issues. Okay. Um, all right, so I'll talk, and as soon as Emma hops on, we'll we'll go to her. Um, so I, I did want to talk just a little bit. So I had put together um, this uh, table based on the conversations that we had last time, if you recall, kind of what are some goals for this OSPO working group. And if you haven't had a chance to take a look at it, if you could just take a look at it right now, that would be great. So I tried to kind of bring ideas together um, and then things that we are currently doing in the chaos project and areas that we aren't currently doing any work right now. Um, so I think the first one was around metrics model development, which I'll talk a little bit about today. Um, another was about tool development and availability. So this is, for example, the work that Sean is doing with Augur and Luis is doing and the whole folks with Grimoire Lab are working on and making those tools more readily available within OSPOs. Um, there was a conversation, and Anna had put a comment in there too, about value creation around standards, patterns, and taxonomies. And I think, Sophia, you have talked about ta taxonomies as well with respect to this work. Um, so how we go about developing those. And then the last two are more communications. So communications more explicitly, I think, with OSPOs, kind of to your the point of your panel, Don. Like, how do we talk with OSPOs who directly who are using uh, chaos tools and chaos metrics and chaos metrics models? So I think that's that falls in there. And then just more broad, I, what I picked out was just broader communication about the work that we're doing just at Open Source Summit North America, at Europe, at Boston, wherever it might be, that aren't necessarily just restricted to panelists who are in OSPO. So was there anything else that, that people wanted to, I just wanted to put these in front of the people. Is there anything else that people wanted to, to add to this or make a comment on? Good. Looks looks rightly ambitious. <laughs> yes, we're going to do all the things by the next, by the next meeting, so. <laughs> So I guess the, the one I wanted to talk about uh, maybe today was metric model and metric model development. And there were kind of two, two parts to this. Um, so one is just is a is kind of a um, kind of a setup here is, is the chaos project develops metrics. Um, so single individual atomic metrics. And those metrics might be like age of an issue or comments in a pull request, you know, kind of very finite, finite things. And over the years, we found that the individual metrics themselves didn't have a lot of, of power alone. And so what we've been doing uh, more recently is developing metrics models, which are really collections of metrics that are meant to have um, an impact collectively. So you bring a series of metrics together to produce a metrics model. And what I'd like to do, and Don, I'm going to actually bring up the one that you had uh, proposed, the starter metrics model, just kind of as an idea on, on what a metrics model is about. So it's this is one that we were developing last week in, um, in one of our other working groups, and just give you an idea here of what a metrics model look, looks like. So Don, do you want to speak to this at all and kind of what the motivation behind this was? Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> right back at you. Yeah, I can I can talk about this. I mean, this this kind of came up because I, I hadn't really thought about it as a metrics model, but these are the four metrics that I use as kind of a baseline project health measurement across all of our projects. Um, and this is super, super simple, super easy. Um, and, and it really is designed to give um, maintainers and project owners a start at looking at project health um, with the idea that if it's, you know, if it's a big project, if it's an important project, they'll build on it and, and do some other, 
you know, other metrics on top of that, that that do it in a lot more detail. And so I think this came up in a, a meeting and I think Matt or Sean suggested that maybe, maybe I put this into a metrics model. Um, so I did that with the idea that then other OSPOs and other projects could use this as just kind of a baseline. Let's start with these four metrics, see what they tell us, and then figure out what we're missing. So this is kind of a just a sort of a starter pack for uh, project health metrics. That was Thanks. the motivation behind it. Thanks. So um, thoughts or, or questions for Don just kind of on this metrics model? The thought I have as I look at it is, Don, I think you arrived at these metrics by finding metrics that are useful and actually employing them in practice. So the model didn't come entirely from the ether, it came from your practice and your OSPO. And I, I think that sometimes when, I, when we think about metrics models, <clears throat> I think it's important to remember that I think the really good ones probably come from things that we use every day or collections of metrics that we we are likely to use. They aren't um, necessarily something that we just come up with. Am I really quiet now? Is that, geez, okay. I'll try to speak louder and figure out my <laughs> audio. Could yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's exactly right. I mean, these are these are the metrics that that I that I use on a on a day to day basis, and I I kind of picked these these four because I think they tell very different things about a project, and I, so yeah. I think they're good. Um, good indicators of, you know, maybe potential problem areas where someone might want to dig in a bit more. And Any I, other I, questions? About yeah, I think, and I think I mentioned that to point out that, met, you know, the folks in this meeting probably have collections of metrics that they frequently use together, and those would be great proposals for metrics models. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Other comments? Have, yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I've seen these before because you, you shared this a couple in a couple different formats as mentioned. Um, and I think I generally I love the idea of um, having a starter pack. I think the only thing that I would want, I would want to change it. I would just slightly want to clarify um, that this is really applicable to you mentioned this verbally, but like your the projects that you have of the majority ownership of. Um, whereas like that's not may be not, not necessarily be all the projects that you're monitoring as an organization. So I think just qualifying it as a like projects that you have sort of that leadership role in, um, because there could be other organizations participating in it, because those things you have more control over things like responsivity and operational health, um, given that you are the majority participants in the group versus a community where you might be less than the majority of the participants in the group, you might have less control over these things. Um, so I think just qualifying that, that this is really where that's aligned. Um, and it doesn't, in terms of my my own personal nitpicking, uh, I always love to comment in areas where these kinds of metrics are less applicable. Um, say, if you have any kind of like automation, I always refer to time to close being heavily influenced by auto close policies in some projects. Um, so just like the caveat that like, this only applies if this is actually looking at human driven behaviors, not automated driven behaviors, and some metrics don't make sense in this context. Um, so it's mostly just around like slight tweaks and ensuring that people know what who this is best suited for and where they could go wrong. And other than that, I love it and I think we should publish it. Yeah, those are all really good points. I mean, you're absolutely right. We actually look at different things when we look at third party projects versus um, the VMware originated ones. And these these are um, designed for projects that you have a lot more control over for sure. Um, and yeah, there are loads of caveats around some of these some of these metrics and when they're applicable and when they're not. So maybe we can, um, yeah, I'll look at how, how best to add some of that to the metrics model. Those are good points, thank you. Do you, do you want feedback from this group? Like, I'm happy to go to the doc, but I didn't know where you were in it before I start throwing in comments. Yeah, throw in some comments. That'd be fabulous because we're, you know, this is still in the review period. We haven't we haven't done the PR yet. Um, so this okay. is the perfect time, actually. So anybody who wants to provide feedback on it, please, please go ahead. I'd love that. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Um, so other comments? And, and I, Emma, I'm seeing that you're. Hello. 
Look at you, you're very quiet, but I do see and I hear you. Emma has my audio people working with her. <laughs> Can you believe we choose to work on computers for our jobs? <laughs> like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Emma, I'll turn it over to you here just as, in just a second. Let me just finish a thought yeah, just on these great. metrics yeah. models. Great. All right. Um, so, so thank. So, point being that we're developing these metrics models. The point here, are, there's another point here too, is that we also have the spreadsheet where we are tracking the development of other metrics models. And so this was the one that Don shared. Thanks, Don. Was just one of about ten that we're kind of working towards um, publishing. So you can take a look at any of these right here. And then I don't know if you saw from, so I, maybe back up just real quickly. So I think to Sophia and Sean and Don's point, you know, one of the things is that if we can communicate with OSPOs a little bit more effectively, we can help identify what those metrics models are that are being implemented from many of the folks uh, that are on this call, and it would be great to publish those and share those. So part of the, I think the, in the chaos project, what we can do is try to improve that communication, identify what those are, and work to publish those and share them with others who are on this call and also just in the to-do group more broadly. And then just to, to also kind of highlight one thing, I don't know if you saw this was from Luis. And this was the from um, Ospology Live in the Netherlands just recently. And it looks like they, if anybody was there, it looks like they did um, some sort of workshop sessions where they identified through the goal question metrics approach what appears to be some metrics models in terms of, say, community activity release frequency, dependencies, some of these things look like risk-related metrics models. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, a, I haven't had a chance to take a look at this. I only saw it maybe five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago, is see how any of the work that came out of that Ospology Live session aligns with some of the metrics models that we have. So for example, we do have a metric model called community activity. I'm curious kind of what, what was what came out of the workshop here and the work that we have done. So I'll try to bring those together as well so that we don't have two different conversations going on kind of in two different directions. All right. Um, so, and then finally, our, our goal too in the chaos project is not just to kind of collect and publish these metrics models, but also work towards implementing them in chaos software. So the published uh, models themselves are useful. I think they create a nice conversation, but our goals are also to work um, with folks at Grimoire Lab and folks at Augur to actually get these metrics models to be deployable in practice so you can see them in, in real life. And Sean, I don't know if you have any comments on kind of the processes that you go through at Augur in deploying things like metrics models. I, I think the Augur work that we're doing that's metrics model-ish right now is fo uh, focused around our collaboration with the OSS Aspen project, which is building a dash plotly front end against Augur data. And um, I have a couple examples if people are interested. Um, I could share them quickly. <clears throat> so as you're tracking those down, Emma, I'll no, turn it over. I, just, I can't share, but I'll go after oh. Emma. I'll share after okay. Emma. Let's get okay, the first. just the idea here is that metrics models seem to have a lot of good traction. I think it's kind of our, our goal here in this working group as part of our, our overall goals in 2023 to collect what those metrics models are that are currently, uh, that currently exist in the world, uh, work to help publish them and share them with other people, but also uh, get put them into practice and implement them through our software. So, all right. Emma, I'm going to turn it over to you because you wanted to talk about work that you're doing at Microsoft. Do you need to screen share at all? Yeah, I think I do. I see the button there, so I'm going to attempt this. Well, you are now co-host, so you should be able to do that as well. Um, I think you have to unshare first. Oh, yeah.
So, um, screen. So I'm not going to do presentation mode just because I'm having troubles <laughs> navigating that. I don't want to waste any more time. But what I thought, what I would just thought I would do is share some of the thought processes and where we are. Um, I, there's a lot of metrics work happening inside of Microsoft. This is specific to some of the OSPO work that we're doing. I, I, I just thought I'd share it and, and leave, put it out there for, for uh, feedback or um, anything else. So this is a deck that I, I circulated a couple of places. I'll also give a shout out to, I think my colleagues, Justin and James are on the call. So they've been a part of this work and might have specific answers to questions. Um, but the background is like almost two years ago now, maybe a year and a half ago. And this is like a question that was coming up all the time from maintainers up to the OSPO. Like, how do I know my, what, what should I be measuring? You know, what is the baseline for how other projects are doing? How, what do I hold myself to? And these are probably all the same questions that, that you get. Um, and I just have this little carrot here because this is a nudge of how, I, how I'm thinking about all of this work is less about like, do you, uh, less about compliance health and like, you know, according to those things, more about like, the, the well-being of, of the project. So, um, but I broke this question down or the way that I think this question breaks down is into kind of three checklists. So the first is what are the questions that we should be asking? Um, how can we answer those questions? And then how do I interpret those, uh, you know, for my project and, and maybe share and ask other people, like how do I, what's that community of practice piece? And, and so initially I broke up this work this way. We um, had the kind participation of Matt and Sean and Elizabeth initially last year uh, in a working group to kind of figure out what are the questions and where, where, what are the where the biggest heat, I guess, uh, in the company that included, I think Grace, I also saw on the, was part of this uh, call from the GitHub side, just trying to get to like, what are the things that we want to invest in first and learning about first? So these are some the, Kind of the first kind of focus areas we call them and i i apologize if i get the way chaos describes them a little bit wrong but like focus areas like securities a focus area and within that there might be a, a set of questions um so that's where we landed we um had a lot of great conversations we had a lot of sharing and also like you know be up a company with lots of different projects uh like that it's a great way to to kind of cross pollinate is having um that kind of working group. So, so through this work, we, and thanks to Chaos, we did have, came up with a set of questions we should be asking. We very heavily, um, heavily is maybe not the right word, but like made sure that we were aligning with the questions that Chaos had published. Like we weren't trying to create anything new here. We we're really trying to like learn from our peers and build on the work over the Chaos project. So internally, this is a link that takes you to a repository of all the questions that we're asking, but they all link out to the Chaos question. So. You know, I think this is really helpful to, to folks who are, um, you know, internally asking some of these questions, but that they can see this work is happening and they can be a part of it if they want to be outside of Microsoft. Like, and that is encouraged all the time. Um, this is just a working group. Uh, I'll get, that's, I'll refer to that a little bit later. But um, one of the things we decided to do was to experiment like with bringing one of these uh, metrics into a visible place for maintainers. And we happen to have like some contributors to the OpenSSF. Um, and so this is our question, how does my repo score according to OpenSSF scorecard? I think that's that should be aligned with the chaos question. And then we popped it into our internal open source repository. So this is a place where if someone wants to come and look at their repository information, these are some of the things that they can find. And we just put this OpenSSF score in there for people to interact with. We did a little bit of, um, you know, circulating, we put in our internal newsletter just to get people interacting with this. I will say when you click on that link, you get the full breakdown. So um, this was something that we also took to security experts in the organization because having champions in the expertise area uh, seemed really important. So we were able to get some validation on you know that these mattered. Probably and definitely some of these, the breakdowns matter more. We still haven't got to how we might highlight those uh, if, if someone comes to the repo and they get this scorecard and they open this, we want to also be able to help them figure out like where should they invest according to like what Microsoft cares about um, and what will make their project better. So this was one attempt to have the method, and this is like the, the challenging part, I don't know, and this is why I proposed in last meeting, we think about remix and reuse of methods because um, Anyway, so that was our first pilot, but then we had this broader question if, if we wanted to say someone at Microsoft had like a gold star 
you know, like, or we're the gold standard for open source. Like, what would that look like? And we sort of play around with this idea of, of tiers, but that didn't quite work because we don't want to, here's a mock-up that we did, like bronze, silver, gold. We didn't actually want to lock levels. We realized that didn't make sense because um, in the bronze level, we initially had new contributors, but new contributors might not matter to some people's goals. So we kind of played around with this idea of, of like what would be a, a baseline anyways, like what is the absolute first things that we want projects to um, measure? Hopefully I'm not going too fast. I'm trying not to take up too much time, but these um, <clears throat> so when you, times, Emma, can I ask a question? Ahead. When you yeah. say, when it says Microsoft average, does that mean that you're locating that comparison just in a, in a closed ecosystem of Microsoft's open source projects? Is that um, what that means? Yes. Yeah. And I'll, um, okay. I have another, this is like an initial, I have a better screen, like an, an iteration of this mock-up, but yes, and I'll, I'll describe that, but um, more specifically on the levels, like when the categorization, it just, it just didn't stick. It didn't quite work the way we wanted to. We definitely want to penalize people or hold them back. So then we got more into the idea of contextual categories. So, <clears throat> and we've even iterated on this since this deck was created, but the idea that there's critical me metrics that absolutely we want people to pay attention to. And those are things like taking in the code of conduct training, right? Like we want everyone in a, in a leadership or maintainer role to understand what their obligations and responsibilities and, and how they're supported. And we have training for that. So safety is a critical metric. Security is a, a critical metric. There's foundational metrics is another contextual category. You know, those might be things like discovery and use and then growth mindset are things like new contributors and, and that kind of thing. Um, I will say that um, this is our, our most up-to-date screenshot, but um, I will say that critical foundational and growth actually have now been changed themselves because critical means a lot of things in software, <laughs> right? Like someone's going to come in here and be like critical. So we've actually made these more verbose um, and I'll give Justin on the call he has given some of this feedback. It, it It's actually going to be a sentence like, things that you should pay attention to once a month or something like that, that really like explains the metric at the top, but they'll still be categorized this way. Um, each has a set of metrics within the focus area uh, or sorry, in the contextual area. And uh, as well as a Microsoft average only for those metrics where we want everyone to pay attention to that, that number. These are all made up, by the way, um, by our designers. So I'll say I don't actually know what the whole score is for Microsoft. But yeah, the idea is that this is a bit of the carrot idea that, you know, if you see that you're lower than the Microsoft average and there's maybe a red, then it really encourages people to pay attention. One, one thought I have is when yeah. you talk about safety, I think there could be some confusion about what that means when, especially for people who work on safety critical systems. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just a thought. I don't have an answer for you. That's a good point. Yeah. And the more that we circulate this kind of thing, these are the types of feedback and thoughts that we get because there's just basically using one word to describe something is problematic, I think, in uh, some of the, these things. So yeah, the, the idea that we'd have their score, an average for critical metrics, a place to ask questions. So we have working groups for security, for diversity, inclusion, for uh, you know, um, a number of things so that they would immediately be able to go somewhere and ask about that question. We also think this may be a forum right now. It's a, just a, a Teams chat, but maybe it's a forum where we start to collect that, the community of practice around this. Hey, Emma. Um, yeah. Elizabeth has a question for oh, you. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, you're good. Um, I was just curious about the use of average instead of like a, a baseline, um, because like, it seems to me that like half the folks would always be under the average. And so that like they could, you know what I mean? Like someone's always gonna be behind, but if you had like maybe a, a, a base, like this is our lowest or our, our you know, expectation is it should be at this number and you're either below or above that expectation. I was just curious if you had thoughts on that. I think that's a great idea is my thought on that. Uh, again, we're just playing with it, but I, you're, you're right because it, when you released your first um, repository, your score might be lower just because, you know, some of the things that you might do haven't happened yet. So I think that's a really great feedback. Thanks, Elizabeth. There's a, it reminds me of a GitHub feature that existed probably three or more years ago now, where it would tell mm -hmm. you how many days it's been since you made a contribution. 
Mm-hmm. And I know that they took that away, and I think the reason that they did is because it was creating this sort of artificial psychological pressure to yeah. to commit something. So yeah. another another thought to keep in mind. Yeah, and I mean that's a a question also to other OSPOs. I you know, I I feel like that pressure is okay in some areas like security and safety, but as we get into things like you know, new contributors, if you have a, you know, if your bus factor, um, to use one of Dawn's um, metrics, is showing, like, high, then that's okay that we're not, you know, there's some things that that just don't make sense to push people on. So, I have a question, Emma. So, is it mm-hmm. possible to customize these metrics for a folk, different uh, audiences, like, for, uh, as, as for safety critical, it's important to have, okay, how, how much contribution they have, recently rather than just long time and like customizing some metrics for different audience and customizing other for the other audiences. Yeah. Um, so I, I think what you're saying is like, if we had new contributors, which is one of ours, how would you customize that to the goals of the team? Uh, yeah. Yes. So I, this is what I would personally love. The idea that there would be a remixable, like a real, like, queries, um, visualizations that you can go in and tinker with and kind of see, you know, get to what the, what you like, get to that granular level that matters for your team. That's what I would love to see come out of this group selfishly, you know, um, and I'll, I, I'll um, get a little, I just have a couple more slides where I actually try and try and describe what I think that might look like as this being a safe place. <laughs> So we, uh, I'll just say that the, the other thing that we believe or that we've designed in this is like this call to action. What should I do, right? Like, here's a button that will take you to show you how to, maybe there's a video, maybe there's a tutorial. In the case of the training, there's like, take the training, right? It just opens up the learning platform and you can start the course. And so that's just more of that. You can see the growth mindset. Uh, this is also from a design perspective, how our designer thought it would be most appealing to be able to, you know, just collapse and expand um, beneath each other. So at this point, we have a mock-up and some ideas about like user interactions uh, because we, you know, this is just a, a base set of, of metrics. We want it to, to be possible to add more. And this last checklist here, development and plugin and extension, something that, that, um, seems really clear is like building this in our internal platform doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for um, our, our team to build something that then is tied to one platform that might go away. It doesn't make sense from the perspective of collaborating with the community that we're building something that might not be easy to, to kind of pull out and contribute so other people can play with it. So right now we're, <laughs> I'm saying this with, you know, the, the industry, like engineering time and all that kind of stuff is hard to get a little bit, but um, you know, thinking about a development approach that is platform agnostic, where we can, for example, have a data source, a query, and a visualization that anyone can go and fork, remix, tinker with, share back. Um, that's the model that, that I think will be helpful. Um, I don't exactly know from an implementation standpoint how that might work, but those are some of the conversations we're starting to have now because I think ultimately this is how we share back to the community as well. So for example, I was looking into the Augur query for new contributors and it was- Oh dear Lord. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so that was, and I, because I was trying to take the data that we have internally and point the, the Augur query at that, and it was just very difficult. And it's, I'm not like, no, oh, yeah, it's um, there's a lot it's... there. There's things like burstness that I don't understand, and so I basically mm-hmm. reconstructed a query that looks at PRs, that looks at issues, that looks at you know some really simple things. I think that's then... the right way to apply it. Yeah, because yeah. the query itself is a series of joins across a number of event types that internally you probably have access to in a much simpler way. Yeah. So, I mean, it was the, the out, the output of the Augur query is what I was after and still trying to copy, right. Where there's like shows new contributors and I wanted to contrast it with the time that employees or paid, you know, paid employees were spending and you can sort of see the graph, the, the time employees were spending go down when there was more new contributors. Like there's that, 
that type of information that would get people excited. But um, to go back to the implementation, I think that's where I'd like to get to that I can take this query and the visualization and put it out there for, you know, um, Binod to go and play with himself. And then we share things, you know, um, just to make that part easy. And it's tied to a chaos question, right? Like, it, you know, it's all comes together as one thing, but that we might individually in hospitals plug in different ones to, to you know, I still can't land on one model for even our OSPO. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it, I think it changes with time and um, yeah. So I hope that was helpful. As I said, it was like yeah. a learning path and our next challenge is to think about this reusable piece. And I'd love to think about it with all of you as well, if, if you're in. No, I think it's fantastic. Very cool. Thanks for, thanks for the time today. Yeah, sure. So um, does, do people have questions or comments for Emma? Grace, I saw you had put a comment in there as well. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I'm not a developer, so I don't know um, how exactly this might apply, but um, GitHub Next uh, shared their new blocks um, feature at Universe a couple months ago at this point. And um, I think it could have a lot of different applications. And so one of the things I was talking to uh, internally about is like, you know, is there a way to customize the metrics that folks show for things like um, health? Because I know a common theme that I hear is that it kind of depends on your project, your goals, like what you're looking to do. And so um, in just thinking about like, so for context, I'm working on the sponsors team um, at GitHub. We're working with a lot of um, organizations and enterprise customers who are sponsoring folks. And we want to show them the ROI on their investment and like the health of a project and how it's at least remaining stable over time. Um, but there's not like one metric for everyone, obviously. And so one of the things I'm thinking through is just productizing like showing health metrics in some way, but more, how do you give someone the tools to display it rather than like figure out the metric <laughs> for everyone. Um, but anyway, Emma, I'll ping you because I want to get your deck like and talk. Um, talk about this more. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I just, I looked at that link briefly and that, that looks pretty exciting. The idea is, yeah, you just tinker with the, the visualization I saw there. That's exciting. Yay. Yeah, and right now I think it's like, like the individual project would obviously um, implement blocks for their README. But um, what if GitHub made more of like a, like a template, like to give folks so that they can, they can display health metrics on their, on their README or someplace else. You're muted, Emma. Sorry. Um... I was just going to say the access to data. So, I mean, I know that Augur pulls in its own GitHub data. I know that we do the same in internally, but GitHub has the data. Like how would, you know, that would be amazing to somehow just have access to that for each repo. So we can talk and get back to the group. Yeah. I mean, if, if we put Augur in your data center, you would get data much faster than we could ever get it. <laughs> it's a challenge, yeah. So, so Emma, can you share these slides on the Slack channel? Is that? Um, hmm. You think about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Um, but I also don't okay. I have to figure out the sharing for that is more of the thing. Uh, I will PDF it if I can't figure out how to share it. No problem. Oh, gotcha. And then Grace and Emma, too, if you want to have this conversation on the Slack channel, I would encourage you to do that so other people could follow, if it's OK, unless there's something something you don't want to have people see. Yeah, I'm happy to chat on. I don't think I'm in the Slack channel. So if someone wants to say, okay. join, I I'll happily yeah. join. Um, I think also just on my side, like I think Emma's already talking to Ashley, who's like the head of our OSPO. Um, and then I, there's just more people to connect with in GitHub of like uh, who are thinking about the same things. That's all. <laughs> okay, right on. Well, whatever works best for you, that's totally. Totally, yeah. just a thought. Well, definitely, either way, share back because I don't. I certainly can't think of any secrets that I have around this. I'm glad to be part of the open interest group. 
there, uh, Grace. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'll join. <laughs> Done. <Thanks. laughs> Any other comments for Emma or questions or even just thoughts that were on your mind while you were watching? I, I think it looks fantastic. And I'm hopeful that maybe some of these features will arrive at, in GitHub as well at some point that, that I think you know, putting metrics in, metrics in the foreground on the platform is, uh, that would be sweet. Yeah, that's the goal. So Emma, I have a question for you. Um, how do you need help? Like where, where would you like, you know, thoughts and insight? Um, I would really love to be part of a discussion on building that. I mean, the discussion Grace and I are already talking about having, maybe we can break off in that because for me, that's the most significant challenge right now. We don't want to just build something internally to fit this one platform. We want to make it like reusable. You can pull into any platform, point to the whatever data source. And like that conversation to me is the most important one. So that's, I don't know if that's help, but that's the big challenge, I think, if anyone wants to talk more about it. I, I think one of the things that that we do that's this part of the putting context around analysis that isn't in a tool per se right now but at the scale you're talking about would probably need to be mm -hmm. is we have ways that we classify in our own heads the like the main project and then the smaller projects under the same organization and in general i think people analyze the high velocity projects that are the core in a different way than lower velocity projects that are supportive of that core and i think finding uh, ways of classifying projects that have face validity to the people consuming the metrics is is where the user interaction challenge lies, like at a high level. All right, cool. Thanks, Emma. Really do appreciate it. Thanks, and everyone. Yeah, that was really great. Um, and just before we go, just one last, oh, Sophia. <laughs> okay. Comments. Um, just I want to remind you that we do have a chaos con coming up February 3rd in Brussels, just prior to FOSDEM. Uh, the schedule is in there, but it's uh, it's ten dollars to register. So uh, and you can follow that link at, on the on the minutes if you'd like to register. The morning is a, a panel, some lightning talks and some working sessions to which one of the working sessions is around OSPOs, probably very similar to the work that Luis had done. Um, and we have an OSPO++ event that's going to be co-located uh, at lunchtime. So that's around open source program offices associated with universities. And then in the afternoon, there are hands-on sessions uh, in one track with Augur and then in another track with Grimoire Lab. So you can register for half a day or a whole day or whatever you'd like. But we'd love to have you there. That'd be great. All right. So maybe I'll see some of you in, in Brussels and maybe I'll see each other. And thanks so much for coming today. Yeah, thanks everybody. Have a great weekend. Yep, you too. Bye all. Bye. Thank you. Bye.